Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for FXpansion's Bloom. Bloom is our delay and diffusion effect plugin. Bloom shares some common ground with many delay plugins, but it's also got some very neat tricks up its sleeve. Here we can see the main interface. This strip in the middle is where most of the standard delay parameters can be found. There are three basic delay models, digital, bucket brigade delay and tape. Each delay type can be tweaked using the character parameter. For tape delay, we have tape age. For bucket brigade delay, we can select the amount of stages. For digital, we can select the number of bits. The other main part of each of the three delay models is the slew. Slew controls just how quickly a delay slides from one value to another. In the centre panel we have several delay options. We can switch between host tempo sync and milliseconds. We can have a stereo or a ping pong delay. We can switch the feedback type from negative to positive. Normally you won't hear much effect on this, but this is useful for when you have extremely short delay times. So we're getting an almost comb filter type effect and the uh, negative or positive feedback type is audible here. There's a freeze mode which will effectively freeze the delay at the current delay time. And there's a reverse mode. To the right here we have the master controls. The input gain controls the gain going into the delay circuitry. You can use this to overdrive the various amps in the circuit. The panning controls the pan of the wet delay signal. The out gain controls the output gain. And finally the mix control controls the mix between the dry signal and the wet delay. 
One of the important things with this control is that you can lock it so that changing presets will not change the mix control at all. If you have your delay set up on a send bus for example, you can put the mix at 100% and then go into this menu and lock the mix parameter so that when you change presets the mix won't change. There are also locks for the delay time and the feedback. Moving down to the bottom row, we have the Modifiers section. This allows us to play with the stereo delay, creating an offset between the two channels, which is great for a stereo width effect, but we can also reduce that width from full stereo to mono, and we can introduce cross feedback between the two channels. Moving on we come to the effects chain section. The effects chain allows you to apply four effects to the delay signal. There's envelope shaping, a frequency shifter, a chorus unit and a nice overdrive unit. Immediately after the effects chain are two filters, a low pass filter and a high pass. Finally on this bottom row is the diffusion network. Now that's just a fancy name for a reverb really, but the reverb is quite special in Bloom in that it can be moved around to different places in the signal flow. Moving up to the top panel here, there are three tabs. In the EQ tab on the right you can see the signal flow of the plugin and here we've got various options to move things around. The diffuser can be put pre or post delay or it can be put in the feedback chain for some really wild spacey effects. The effects chain can also be moved around. By default it's pre feedback. It can also go in feedback or after the delay altogether. The ability to move around various components of the delay really opens up the sound design options. The last thing to talk about in the audio processing itself is the EQs. There are two EQs in the signal flow and you can see them in the signal flow diagram. There is the FX EQ which sits between the effects chain and the filters. This can be really useful for modeling certain types of delay for example, on a typical tape delay, you might get a buildup of low to mid frequencies due to the saturating nature of the tape. By using an EQ in the feedback circuit, you can model the gradual buildup of these frequencies. Here we've got the MIDI Q increasing a frequency of around 500 Hz and the more I increase the gain on the FX EQ the more you can hear that build up. The second EQ can also be seen in the signal flow diagram and it comes after the delay. This can be useful for compensating for any of those frequency buildups or just generally EQing the signal to how you want it to sound. The two EQs are arranged on the left here. There's a master on off switch for each one. Each EQ is basically a low shelf, high shelf and a mid parametric band. The two EQs share frequency selectors for each band. So here we've got the low band frequency selector, we've got the FX EQ gain which is the one which is in the feedback circuit and we've got the master out EQ gain. 
Mid, similarly, we've got frequency, FX EQ, and out EQ gain. The high frequency band, again, a frequency selector, the FX EQ gain, and the out EQ gain. And then finally, there is a mid Q control for selecting the width of the mid band EQ. High gains, you can get some really resonant feedback going on. So all this delay modeling is very good, but where Bloom really shines is with automation. Bloom has two LFOs, an envelope follower, a sample and hold circuit, and three sequencers, all of which can be used to automate just about any parameter on the Bloom interface. Let's assign LFO1 to the panning of the delayed signal. Firstly, I'll select the LFO1 modulation source. Then, by hovering on the outside of the knob, I can drag up and down to apply LFO1, and we can see the little triangle showing us the value of the pan as the LFO is applied to it. and then we can adjust various parameters on the LFO. The envelope follower follows the amplitude of the incoming signal. Let's apply that to the delay time. Select envelope follower. Again, we can adjust various parameters of the envelope follower. Potentially the most interesting tab, however, is the Sequences tab. Each one of the sequences works in exactly the same way. You can select Step Length, and Number of Steps. Adjust each step as you see fit, and then use these as a modulation source. I'll select Sequencer 1. Also apply SLU to the output of the sequencer, making it glide between each step's value. Each sequencer has a default destination which can be enabled in the top left of the sequencer. Sequencer 1 is the delay time, sequencer 2 is the freeze parameter, and sequencer 3 is the reverse parameter. By using a combination of these three sequences, very complex patches can quickly be created. randomize each one and there's even a drunk mode 
where the sequencer will randomly step forwards or backwards in the sequence. The final thing we haven't mentioned on the interface are these switches at the top. If the feedback of your current patch gets wildly out of control, which is very possible with Bloom, you can always click the panic button and this will kill the audio dead, potentially saving your speakers. The saturate option will apply a warming saturation to the output of the plugin. There's a MIDI learn mode, which is very easy to use. Simply enable it, touch any green square and then move your MIDI controller to bind that MIDI control to that parameter. There's a master bypass for the entire plugin. There's a high definition mode which enables four times oversampling within the plugin. And then finally there's the trails button which mutes any incoming signal but allows the bloom feedback and tail of the delay to carry on ringing out. That's it for this tutorial. We hope you enjoy bloom as much as we enjoyed making it.